G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, today we're going to look at some end mills that Bangor has sent me. They suggested maybe I'd like to check them out. And yeah, I am actually interested because, yeah, my end mill collection is in a sad and sorry way, really. I've done a lot of work and so some new ones would be handy. So I picked on these and it's interesting, you get eight. You get eight, eight end mills that go from 12 mil, 10 mil, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Now, these are all four fluid end mills. They're all coated with something called NACO, NACO, which I presume is a type of nitride coating. I would expect so. And they're made from Rockwell 65 tungsten steel. Now, that's really a type of high-speed steel with a lot of tungsten in it. We're talking 20-25% tungsten. And, I mean, that's a good thing, certainly, but they're not solid tungsten as such. They're, they call them carbide, and that's probably, you know, you know, not a bad way to go about it. If you look at all these end mills and tooling that's available called carbide or tungsten or solid carbide or tungsten steel, it's pretty confusing and you've really got to make up your own mind what they are. And from what I can gather, these are a type of super hard high-speed steel. Now, the interesting thing about this set is that you get the whole eight for the princely sum of $45 Australian. $45 Australian for eight. I mean, that's pretty damn good. Now, it's even more interesting when you look at what you pay for these singularly. Now, you can't buy all of these singularly, but they're at, they give you an idea of how the prices compare on Banggood. So we're talking $45 Australian for all these. We take away these. You take away this, which you can't buy singularly from Banggood anyway, and you're left with two. And those two together from Banggood cost $45. The 10 mil is $27.73, and the 8 mil is $18.73. So you've got to say, well, why would you buy? two when you can have eight with the two included for the same amount of money. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be some sort of a deal, don't you think? So, you know, here they are. I'll put them back. And as I said, you can't buy that one singly anyway. So, yeah, it looks like pretty good value, and particularly when you compare end mill prices to the set, various end mill prices from all over, you know, other other sellers or whatever, you'll find that end mills are definitely not cheap, and once again, as I said, eight for $45, I think that's a pretty extraordinary deal. Okay, let's uh, check a few of these out and compare them to some brand new American end mills I've got to see how the finish compares and uh, from first observations they look pretty well and these are made by Drill, Drill Pro by the way which is pretty good stuff overall from my experience so Drill Pro. Okay let's check it out. Right this is what we'll be comparing against these are some end mills I've got which are from Reptile Companies, Morse cutting tools in the good old US of A and bright line in the UK. This is a two flute. This is a four double ended. I think they are either new or close to new. I can't remember having used these. The small size is, is going to be more dramatic than on the bigger size. So, so here's the Morse cutting tools four flute and the 10 mil. You can see the quality. Yeah, 
it is the bright line UK two flute. And now we throw in the the eight mil. Pretty good. I don't, I don't think there's much there to complain about. Looking down from above, everything looks pretty good. Yeah, they're nicely made. Very nicely made. And here's the 4mm, the 3mm and the 2mm. This is as close as I can get with the camera and still keep it in focus. So now it's just a matter of trying them out I suppose and uh, I'll just run them through a bit of aluminium and some steel. I don't expect any surprises. They're good and sharp. I mean, they're super sharp. The coating hasn't dulled them in any way. They're, yeah, they're very, very sharp. So, let's get on with it. Right, now I don't profess to be any sort of expert on milling whatsoever. And this is my motley collection of slot mills and end mills. And I've got diamond burrs here and carbide burrs. These are all Chinese mills. These are American and English. And they're up at the end here, they're uh, good quality. I'm not sure who made them, but they're, they're uh, carbide tip. You know, they've got indexable tips on them. So normally that's what I'd use. I'd use indexable tips and I'd use high-speed steel. And none of them are coated in any, in any way. So normally if I was using high speed steel I would use a lubricant with aluminium. But it's interesting reading up on this nitride stuff, they reckon that if you uh, run them dry through aluminium they won't go all up. The nitride is supposed to prevent that happening. Whether that does or not I've no idea. I've never done it before. So we'll try them. And once again, you know, speed wise there's all these feed rates and speeds. It's uh, it's beyond me and I just start off at a moderate speed and feed, you know, manually and see what looks good. If it's if it's too slow I'll speed it up and if it's if it's uh, struggling I'll uh, cut back the feed rate and it's all basically just gonna be fly by the seat of your pants stuff, so don't don't go uh, quoting <laughs> Speed and feed rate manuals to me because it's going to be a total waste of time. All right, we'll just play with these as a backyarder and see how they go. And I'm starting off with a, a 10 mil, and I'm going to run it through some home cast aluminium just to clean it up a bit. We'll see how she goes. obviously go a lot faster than that, but uh, yeah, it's doing a good job. Okay, we're going to double the speed, so we'll take it up to 1300 RPM, and once again, 
Yeah, it doesn't seem to be galling, so that's a good sign. So, you know. Okay, I'll give it a go, see what happens. <coughs> that stuff that's just like butter you know that's amazing so there you go it did that job no problem aluminium is a piece of cake these are very sharp no galling which is good and uh, I mean you could put use lube if you want to use lube and that way you got you know virtually no chance at all but uh, yeah you handle that quite okay so I think we'll just move on to some steel now. I'm up the speed back to 650, 640. And we'll try it on some steel, some uh, junk steel. I'll check it out, see what we've got. All right, no test will be complete without a bit of rebar in it. And all the rednecks out there love to see rebar. So that's what we'll do, we'll mill some rebar. 614 RPM. And I'll just take a light pass through it. We'll give it a bit of lube and uh, see how she goes. Alright, check this out. You notice, you notice I'm feeding from the front to the back. If you ever mill on a lathe, always mill from the front to the back because the cutter's coming down this way and it, you want it to pull the job down onto the onto the bed. If you feed it the other way, feed it from back to front, it'll, the cutters will be coming up and when they hit the job and I'll tend to try and lift the work off the ways. So you basically do, are doing ramp cutting from the front. That's the safest way to do it. If you come in from the back, it will chatter like hell and you could break something. So, yep. Feed it this way.
job. Beautiful, no problem whatsoever. Once again, that's what I thought would happen. And everything's intact here. I mean, I wasn't pushing that very hard at all. Once again, if you want to get life out of your high-speed steel tooling, don't, you know, don't go crazy. So, you know, that was 614 RPM. You could probably go 800 quite safely. But just for demonstration, I think that's enough to show. But yeah, it works good. Well, there you go. Did that easy. Handle the rebar. Piece of cake, no problem whatsoever. And got a good finish. Now, you know, as I said, I'm no milling expert by a long chalk. I'm a real amateur. And I get by, that's about all I can say. And, uh, well, you're into a sophisticated realm when you get into milling. And if you do everything by the book, so... I don't profess to do anything by the book when it comes to milling. So, yeah, just take it uh, easy in the comments, all right? Now, we've proven that it'll mill this stuff, which is quite gnarly stuff. It's got a hard outer coating and it gets softer as you get in. The coating didn't crap out or come off. It all looks good. There's no chipping whatsoever. And, you know, there was enough heat there to smoke the old Kero engine oil lube mix so that that's where i would normally run those sort of speeds you know i wouldn't normally go higher than say 800 would be the maximum i would normally use for high speed steel but overall yeah i think it's a nice little set and certainly for the money it seems like good value and sharpness wise yeah everything's still <laughs> good and sharp so I think you just make your own mind up on this. I, uh, I'd recommend it as a buy because, uh, yeah, it's not a lot of money for what you get. And as I said at the beginning of the, of the video, if you check the pricing on the individual components, you're a long way ahead. Now, they do have other sorts of coatings there uh, on other end mills, similar sort of pricing. So yeah, it's worth having a bit of a poke around on the website. I'll put the links to this particular set of end mills in the video description and if you want to just go in and have a look and check out the rest we'll get into it okay that's it from me hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you next time cheers